Hello everyone and welcome back to No Man's Sky. This is Rusty, and I'm here with another episode of Logic School. Today we're going to learn how to create a scrolling light effect using a simple three-stage cycling circuit. Along the way we'll also learn a few new tricks for using a power inverter. This kind of circuit can really help bring your base to life, and is more reliable than bite beat based lighting which can be a little buggy in some situations. It's a really easy circuit and it gives you a lot of bang for your buck. So let's get started. You'll notice that I'm starting this build with three colored lights already in place. These will be the target for our circuit so that we can see that it's working. I've also brought in power from my base power grid. Begin by placing a power inverter. To the right, and just above, we'll place an auto switch. Attach each of these to base power. Directly above the power inverter, we'll install another auto switch, and we'll run a wire between the two switches. Since I want to keep my circuit looking nice and clean, I'm adding an additional node where I intend to attach a wire later. Run a short length of wire from the second node of the auto switch to the third node of the power inverter. Attach the remaining node of the power inverter to nodes 1 and 3 of the auto switch. If you've watched my video on timers, you know that this will create a 1 second delay in our circuit, and you'll notice that our circuit is already beginning to cycle. So let's start attaching the lights. Attach the middle light to the empty node on our wire and you'll see what's taking shape. There's still a gap in our cycle though, and to make it seamless we'll need to add one additional component. Place a second power inverter, and attach the third node of the nearby auto switch to both its first and third nodes. Attach the last node to the inactive light, and this completes our circuit. If we attach more lights to this row, the light will appear to march down the line, but I think we can come up with a more impressive demonstration than that. I began by placing box lights, and arranging them in a semicircle nearby our circuit. This took me some time, but I've sped the process up with the miracle of editing. Beginning with the first light, I attached the wire to every third light in the semicircle. And I repeated this process beginning with the second light, and the third light, and so forth, until every light was attached to a few buddies. Testing it out, you can see how this creates the illusion of a continuous scrolling light. I decided that I wanted to bump things up a notch, so I added additional rows of box lights on top of the first, creating a cylindrical chamber. I attached each of these new lights to our first row using these diagonal wired connections. This means that all the connected lights will light up simultaneously, creating a spiral effect. If you've watched this far, then you know how to build a simple cycling circuit that you can use to create all sorts of interesting effects. 
I look forward to seeing how you use this circuit in your own builds. If you're eager to get working on your own base, then happy building, and I hope you'll drop a like and subscribe before you go. For those of you who want to take the deep dive into the logic behind this circuit, we'll first need to take a closer look at power inverters. Power inverters are the companion piece to the auto switch. The two parts have very similar functions, but where the auto switch is used to activate power flow when signaled, the power inverter deactivates what signaled. Power inverters have three nodes for attaching wires. We'll number these nodes 1, 2, and 3. Node 1 is our input. This is where power is entering the inverter. Node 2 is an output node. Since power can flow either way through the power inverter, nodes 1 and 2 are interchangeable. So whichever side is your input, that will be node 1, and output will always be node 2. The third node is a modification node. When this node receives power, it will terminate the flow of energy through the inverter, basically acting like an off switch. We can attach these nodes to each other, and doing so will create different behaviors. In this example, we've attached the first node of the power inverter directly to the modification node. When this inverter is activated, it will emit a pulse. This is useful for all sorts of things, but today we're using it to convert a two-second flow of power into a brief one-second flow. In the last example, we've attached the output node of the inverter to node 3. Now the inverter emits a repeating pulse, also known as blinking. While that might not seem special, it is. We can use this effect to create all sorts of clocks and repeating actions, which is how we'll be using it today. Let's return to our project and take a look at how we've used power inverters to coordinate actions in our circuit. This circuit has three stages. During the first stage, power flows through both power inverters and lights the first light in our sequence. This power converter is configured to convert that signal into one short pulse. The auto switch is also being triggered during this stage. It will delay the signal by one second and initiate stage two. In stage two, the top power inverter has deactivated the light. The signal has passed through our one second time delay and has now lit the middle light in our sequence. This signal is also triggering the auto switch, which will activate in one second. Most importantly, the signal is also triggering the lower power inverter. This creates a closed loop starting from node two passing through the one second time delay and finishing again in node three. This will cause the circuit to loop every couple of seconds. Stage three starts when the auto switch that we triggered during the previous phase finally activates. The power inverter has responded to the signal and shut down, but the auto switch will remain active for one additional second lighting the third light in our sequence. That's just long enough for the power inverter to reset. The resetting power inverter returns the circuit to stage one and continues in an infinite loop. We only need to attach these lights to the first three light boxes in our array, and our specially wired light boxes will do the rest. This type of circuit can be very versatile. It's the basis for more complex projects, such as clocks, computers, and games. How will you adapt to this circuit, and what will you do with it? Let us know in the comments section. If you've watched the video all the way through, then you now know how to create a cycling circuit, and how to use that circuit to make scrolling light effects. You've also learned a couple of new ways to use power inverters in your own logic builds. This has been Rusty, 
and the channel is Fringe Theory Gaming. If you like this sort of informative No Man's Sky content, then be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. We have lots of interesting projects on the horizon, and I hope you'll join me again for the next Logic School.